I got tricked. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Almost none of them will know. Almost. Why but, would you know? And that sounds dangerous. It actually, that's not dangerous. So I'm looking. I'm like, I'm about to kill these guys. You know. Yeah. You're listening to the Roofing Success Podcast, a show created to inspire roofing contractors to achieve optimal success in their roofing businesses. I'm the host, Jim Aline, the co-author of the books, Internet Marketing for Roofing Contractors, and the best known roofer. I'm also the co-founder of Roofer Marketers, the leading digital marketing agency for the roofing industry. On each episode, I sit down with industry leaders to talk about their processes, the lessons they've learned, and how to find success in roofing. Well, welcome to another episode of the Roofing Success Podcast. Live from the Roof Gallery in Marietta, Georgia. Yes. Hosted by the man Roofs by Don, Donovan Morgan. What's How up, guys? You, Everything's going great. Thanks for asking. Yeah. Welcome to Atlanta. Thank Welcome you. Welcome to Atlanta. You. How do you, you like it so far? That's beautiful, man. Good, it's good, beautiful. Good. It's been a little rainy, but that's all right. Yeah, yeah. It's course. better than the snow that I've that that we that we have up where I'm at. A hundred percent better. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're snowboarding or something like that. That's right. I definitely think it's better. That's right. <laughs> Uh, so, Donovan Morgan, you are the founder of Roofs by Don. Yes. Let's talk about how you got into roofing. I got tricked. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I was doing, um, I got tricked into the door-to-door industry, so okay. to speak. So, I'm real good at sales, I, naturally. Um, marketing, I guess, is natural. Um, I did music. Yeah. So, with yeah. me doing music, I have to market myself. So, I was, you know... Pushing CDs, showing my age a little bit. <laughs> showing CD, <laughs> pushing CDs in like South Beach and stuff like that. Flyers for DJ Khaled. I used to promote for him, and that's what helped as far as marketing and and as far as going to people and talking to them. Wise, you know, yeah, yeah. like face to face. Yeah. And um, I finally I, I opened up for like Rick Ross, um, Lil Wayne, um, Ludacris. I'm actually doing pretty good, but just not enough to be like a household name. Okay. So, and me, I, I like nice things. So I'm like, hey, I need, to, I need to buy a Benz. I need to get a mansion, you know? And with the music, it wasn't necessarily doing it like that yet. And um, my girl at the time, she had got lupus. So I had to get like a real job, so yeah. to speak. Yeah. So I'm like, let me find something so that way I can hold everything down. And I ended up at Home Depot. And it was like one of the worst things ever. Um, I have a tattoo that says I won't lose because I like music. Uh-huh. But because I had the tattoo, they would only let me push carts. At first, they wouldn't even let me inside. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I know I'm better than this, you know? So um, while I was there, I broke a record um, within my, my three months of working there just as far as um, how fast I was excelling. And then I was in the the garden section, and I was selling, like, accessories with uh-huh. all of the gardens. I was always selling, like, multiples and things like that. So um, once they see me doing that, I asked, how could I get a raise? And they was like, you can't get a raise. He was like, you have to wait till a year. And after a year, it's 60 cents. I'm like, oh, my gosh. I'm like, I'm like let me get out of here, you know? So um, I found something that was commission-based. And that's what kind of started my um, route. Um, it was the moving industry, though. So moving household okay. furniture from yeah. um, one state to another. And I started doing real good in that. Um, I was able to buy my Benz now and things like that, make six figures. Um, but the moving industry, it just wasn't the best customer-friendly industry. Yeah. And me, I like to be someone that, I like to take pride in what I do and I get kind of obsessed with it. Yeah. So I want to get good results. So like at the end of the day, when I was doing moving, I'd price a homeowner, say a thousand dollars, but the price always goes up. So if I'm talking to someone, they're like, I only have a thousand. I'm like, yeah, I got you covered. I double, triple checked. And then when you get to the home, the price goes up, you know, homeowners are not happy. You get bad reviews. Yeah. Things that's like not that. a good experience to be that, to, to, uh, for me, because then you're dealing with that customer. They're calling you back. They're, exactly. Is a, if, if I've, I always learn that in sales, I've, I've done a lot of sales in my life, and it's if, if I'm not, if not, if I'm not completely sold on what I'm selling, mm-hmm. it's I, not good. I, I don't sell. Exactly. Like I won't. I won't perform at my peak. And I had to learn that. Right. I had to learn that by by going through it. Yeah. At first, it's like yeah, I'm sauce so or anything. Uh, I'm making money. That's right. Let's do it. And then you realize like, nah, I want a better quality of life. Yeah. And I want my customers, especially if I'm trying to make them happy, make them have a good experience. Yep. I want it to be able to be followed through. Yeah. You know, so um, I, I try to switch industries. I came to Atlanta. Long story short, um, I got into AT&T, which was door to door. That's how I got tricked. <laughs> That's where I met Dan DeMansion, actually, my business partner. And um, he, the first week he trained me as far as for door to door. 
And then my first week with myself, I broke a record again. Um, I got 14 sales my first week. I'm um, AT&T, and it kind of just started going. I, um, roofing, I met a roofing owner. It was just one weekend. I was in one neighborhood, and I was on my eighth sale, so I was killing it. Like, it was my second day, and he seen me. He was like, I just see you. Every time I'm looking, you're signing somebody up. He's like, um, what do you do you know that you could be doing the same thing but for roofing? I'm like, eh, I'm good. I'm the top salesperson where I'm at. I'm good right now, you know? <laughs> but um, at t they messed up my check, and they didn't know, but their roofing company called me again. I was like, nah, I'm good. And then they called me one more time when I actually left at t because of a mm. money issue. So I stayed at at t for three months, and then I started looking at, I needed something to make over $100,000. I need to keep my bends. I couldn't get yeah. repoed, you know? Yeah. And then um, I found, like, home care, like health insurance. Okay. You know, you go to health insurance. I'm like, maybe that could be it. And the roofing call company called me again. And this time I was like, you know what? I'm still working at at and little white lie. But I'm still working at at and but they owe me $1,350, $1,350. So if you give me that, I'll come in. It was like, no problem. I'm like, okay, let's go. <laughs> so I get there. Um, they only had like four salespeople at the time. Um, and then one person he had, um, shout out to Austin, but just at the time I'm real competitive. Yeah. So once he had like one arm, but he won the contest. It was like two contingencies for that week. And whoever got the most contingencies <laughs> won $500, you know? So I'm looking, I'm like, I'm about to kill these guys, you know? Yeah. And then, um, that's why I tell. So the next week I was like, look, I'm going to, I'm going to win this competition so I can win this $500 and then I'm going to recruit people that can do the same thing. So that the next week that came in, I got five contingencies. So I actually won. And then I brought in um, two people, um, one Victor, Victory Shingles. Um, he's part of Roost by Don too. And then another person. And they were just getting four um, contingencies each and I was getting my five. And we were just started killing it and being yeah. the office really. Yeah. And um, just from there, um, within the three months I was working there, I recruited over... Um, 20 people to the office, 20 new people, and all all really from the AT&T office that were doing door-to-door. Yeah. And it was cool because with the AT&T, I feel like with, with their kind of um, system a little bit, it's kind of like you're, you're trained like a Spartan and you're trained like a Marine. And then with door-to-door, when I see like the roofers, they're not really trained at all. So it's like you're getting in a fight with like a, a regular civilian yeah. and a Marine. And um, so when we started, we started in the winter. But the winter, we started, and I, we just went in. We didn't know a slow season, a busy season. We didn't know anything. You didn't know what you didn't know. So I just started going, <laughs> and we just started, and we were getting contingencies left and right. Yeah. We weren't getting them approved right away. We, were, we didn't know how to find the right houses. We didn't really get trained like that. We got trained as far as throw us out there. What do we say? I don't know. So I kind of had to um, make my pitch mixed with stuff that I knew in the past. Yep. You know, And it ended up working. We ended up making it our own that I could start training to other people. But long story short, as far as roofing, um, I got in, once we got in, the main thing with us is we were able to recruit big. So I recruited over 50 people within um, a year time frame. I'm a million dollar producer on my own, just um, yep. for, for myself, I started producing my first year. And this is not good, but I took four months off in the summer, which is weird, because I didn't know a busy season or slow season. So I was, I was doing it, I wasn't used to pipeline business too yeah. much. So I'm getting my sales and I'm getting like over $10,000 a week and it started happening consistent. And it was, I remember like in June, I was like, yeah, I could be working right now, but we were having discrepancies in the office. I was trying to be a sales manager and I was recruiting so many people, but I wasn't getting like any kind of kickback or anything. Oh. So I'm like, um, what's, what's going on? Let me try to um, elevate. And at the end of the day, I, when in this in June in the summer they weren't really giving me like a way to elevate so I was like let me take some time off and I took time off till August and it ended up being one check I got and it was like a little less than six thousand dollars I was like hold on what's going on and that's when I got back working you know yep um, so one thing I always like to tell roofers is once you're grinding it's a pipeline business do not stop do not <laughs> stop that's what all <laughs> roofers do that's how they mess up you won't you'll be surprised we have people that come in and. We pump them up. They'll they'll get a pipeline. They get twelve thousand, sixteen thousand dollars on one check, and then they disappear. Yeah. Then they go to Miami. They're having surgery. They're doing whatever they're doing, you know. Um, but the main thing is to stay on the grind, so that way, once you get that twelve thousand or sixteen thousand dollar paycheck, then you can get it next week as well. But the only way that's going to happen is if you keep working. The the week that you stop, 
four weeks later, that paycheck is going to stop. That, that That's an interesting thing to talk about. That Like, it's a pipeline business. Mm-hmm. So how do you fill a pipeline first? You got, I mean, you, you're, you're door to door, strong door to door. That's your, that's your strength. So how do you fill that pipeline door to door? What are some things that you can help other people uh, in that regard? That's a good question. To be honest, I think it's the simple answer, which is going out there and knocking doors. Um, <laughs> the, they say the hardest door is the car door. Yeah. But once you got the car door and you start knocking and you start working, you're going to get your customers. Um, you're giving them a service. You're really like Superman to the roof. So to be honest, when I go there, I'm smiling. I'm like, hey, how you doing? I feel like they need me. Yeah. So it's, it's not even a sale. I'm giving a free inspection at first, you know? So really it's like I'm helping you protect your asset, which is your home. And in, re- in return for that, in return of that, I get to build your roof, you know? So what I, what I hear there is first it's a mindset, mm-hmm. right? Like 100%. You're, you're, you're not, it's not how many doors can I knock or what, what am I going to say here? It, it's that you're, you have the mindset that you're going out and helping. Yes. And, and if especially, you have, yeah. especially coming from the moving, like yes. I was saying, you know, the quality <laughs> of life. Yeah. So with this, I actually get to give them a product. We build a roof and they're actually happy. Yeah. They feel like they're on their own home improvement show. Yeah. So with the mindset, I'm literally like, hey, I'm, I'm here to help you. Yeah. It, it's free. And it's kind of like me saying, hey, you have a flat tire and I'm a mechanic. Like, you're going to say no? Like, yeah. no, you know, you, no, I don't. What do you mean? I'm, I'm telling you the flat tire. Like, yeah. you know, so, or at least you could just inspect to see how much air, air pressure you have in there. The very least, right? It's the same thing with the roof. It's, it's a free inspection. There's a storm in the area. The, the very least you can do is just check to see if you have damages. That's right. Because if you do, then you, you can be proactive. Or if you don't, now you know you're good. And now when you have that mindset, you're, you, you're the expert. You can go and help these people. Mm-hmm. Now it's not as daunting a task to open that car door. Exactly. Right. And, and that's the main thing. Um, it, it, it's door to door. So if you think about it, you're like, oh, man, what am I doing? They don't want to. They don't want um, a stranger coming to their door. Yeah. But that's putting yourself in the wrong mindset. Yeah. Because as soon as you start thinking that, you don't want to get out yourself. You know, you start thinking that you're a person that's not attractive to be at the door. But to me, to be honest, um, I feel like we're more attractive than anyone else comes to the door because we're not selling AT and T. We're not. We're not selling knives. Um, we're actually helping your asset. It's it's your house. Unless you're, unless you're a renter, then I understand. Yes. And I understand how I could be maybe interrupting your your daily yeah. life. But other than that, I'm protecting your asset. I'm making you aware of the situation since we're, you know, the trusted advisor, since we do this on a day-to-day basis. Yep. And that's it, just making you aware. And if you actually have damage, now we can help you. Right. Now you moved out of, you were, you were a, would you say, sales, in a sales manager role at, the, at that company? Yeah. And then what, what, what was the, the turning point where you're like, I got to do this on my own. I, I got to be the owner. Honestly, um, just dealing with bad companies. Yeah. Yeah. When you have bad owners and you realize and you realize what you should have done different or what you would never do, what you know. Yeah. Um, just simple stuff. Sometimes I think some things are real simple. It's just that if it's done or not. So like if you don't pay your salespeople. That's an easy one. Right. That's it. Right. What are some of the harder ones? What are some of the things that some people don't think about that as an owner, that if you're doing this, you're, you're. You're putting your business in jeopardy by by not making a great home for your people. Um, I think the main the main thing like with that as far as I feel like you're you're putting your business in jeopardy when just like you said you're not really caring about your salespeople you don't care about necessarily growth yep. you're just looking at them as a check and to be honest. Um, Nowadays, just in business and when people want jobs, people don't even stay at places that long anymore. I think it's like, what, three years and then they're moving on to the next thing, right? Yeah. So you want to have a, a place where there's growth um, and where it's, it feels like you're actually there, like a family kind of setting where you're actually there to help, you're actually there to empower. So like with us at Roost by Don, um, the main thing that I took from the other company that I made sure I didn't want to do was... We like being dream facilitators. So that's what we call the dream facilitators. So anyone that comes to our um, company, yes, it's a, it's a roofing office, it's a roofing company. But the first thing I want to know is in the first round interview is what do you like to do outside of roofing? Yeah. Because I don't want this to be a place where it kills your dreams. 
a lot of times people think roofing is not a sexy industry, so they're like, oh, I'm a roofer now, oh my gosh. They don't even want to show it on their on their page. Yeah. They'll make a separate page just to show, you know, the roofing stuff, you know? Yeah. And I think the main the reason why is because how it's portrayed, you know? And when if you become a roofer, it's like your dreams are dead. Who wants to who says I'm a roofer just as a kid? So that's no what you one. think is gonna kill your dream, you know? Yeah. But to be honest, um, this is what enhances your dreams. Well, that and this is what I see. So people like for instance, they, they like music. We're in Atlanta, so a lot of people like music. We have a theme song. It's called Every Single Day. That's right. But it started because us dream facilitating. So we have artists that um, like music. Hey, l- l- let's let's rap. Let's let's make a song. You know, and I actually got them paid. I got um, them paid. So that was their first music gig. You know, um, same thing. We have um, videographers, photographers. So we have um, we have our room, our media room. Yeah. We have a podcast. Um, not podcast. I'm sorry. A uh, reality show every single day. That's going to be coming. And this is our confessional room, you know? Uh, so we do cool things like that. Um, we make homeowners even um, feel like they're on their own home improvement show, you know? So it's not just like a construction zone and nails on the ground. No, it's like your Mrs. or Mr. HGTV. Yeah. You get the before and after. Because everything is more of like an experience. You know, it's kind of like, to me, it's like you just go to work and you just clock in or you go somewhere and it's like, even when it's after hours, you're just there because you love it. It's like, I would do this regardless. Yeah. And when it's roofing, sometimes it's hard to find that. But when you mix it with things that people love to do, yeah, then it becomes fun. So making sure that you're creating an environment for your team for them to to thrive in, correct, to to expand their skill set, but also have fun with it too, correct. Um, if people that like animals, yeah. so we sponsor the Atlanta um, Humane Society. We got a custom doghouse, Roost by Don Doghouse. You know, so just things like that. We always like to. Um, give back and just enhance what other people like to do. Yeah. How it, you had talked about um, one thing that I, that I thought was important and, and, and it's miss I'm, I'm, I'm missing it right now and I'm going to have to think about it for a sec, but it's okay. um, in that reality show, this is what I want to go back to yes. the reality show aspect of it, right? Not just for your guy for, for roofs by Don every, every single day, but for the homeowner and making yes. the homeowner feel like they are on a reality show or like a, They're on their a, own H, home, improvement home, show. Improve, home improvement show. Right. Yes, yes. Talk to that. What's the process of that? What have you like, what steps in that process do you do to make them feel that way? Great question. So with me, um, the main thing is I, I usually like to say this is I treat roofing like a sport, or like business, like a sport in general. So I want to be the, the best of the best. Right. So I feel like if you're Tiger Woods, you're Michael Jordan, you're LeBron, then you're probably on TV, right? <laughs> so that's why you say, hey, we need to do it every single day. We need to get on podcasts. We need to do interviews. You know, yeah. We need to be out there. Um, so as far as for a roofer now, to give the homeowners that experience, I feel like they need to feel like they're on their own home improvement show. Yeah. And so that's what we do. So once we go in, the starting process is even the first inspection. That's the before pictures. <laughs> that's it right there, you know? Um, what, once we sign them up um, and we actually get the get it approved, we do a quick video with them. We usually, once, once we sign them up, too, we usually have, like, a with the um, contingency, have them smile with the, um, with the salesperson, you know? Just have them involved in the process. Yeah. We tell them to look us up. So, yeah, I, I want to make sure you guys are a good company. Look us up right now. Our shirts have QR codes, so they're able to open it up, and then they kind of see – us on HGTV with David Bromstad. Okay. And then they see like the, um, the social proof on the social media. They see some of the reviews from homeowners and then they want to be part of it. And then once we actually sign them up, they get approved. They, they sign the bill contract. We actually have a, a home improvement um, section. So basically we have a Roost by Don VIP customer experience where Roost by Don pops up <laughs> and we, we interview them, give them some questions, but essentially they have their, own home improvement show section we bring the cameras out they get the befores and afters the drone shots um and at the end of the day they're able to put that on their social media Mm. they're able to keep that with them as well because again everything is an experience to me so i go to the burberry store once once i get there they say hey hey mr morgan would you like a um water yeah sparkling or still so that's why when you come to the gallery the roof gallery would you like a water sparkling Sparkling or or still Um, we have our customer experience section where it's um, it's just a more elevated experience and interactive for the homeowners. We have a pull test. Um, we have different things where homeowners can do as well. So then they can 
Because usually, to me, I think um, when homeowners buy Roost, they don't really know what the product is. No, JAF, for Ico sure. owns Corning, Certainty. Yeah. It doesn't matter, you know? Yeah. Um, they're really buying it from you. So they're really buying a Roost by Don system, and, yeah. then away, and then whatever the product is, is just what happens that wherever I put on there. Yeah. But they're going to trust me to be the trusted advisor to put the best product on there, of course. We were talking about, I was talking with this, uh, with someone else recently, and we were talking about how if you ask a homeowner a year later what shingle is on their roof, mm -hmm. what manufacturer it is, that almost none of them will know. Almost why right. would you know? And then it's real hard. But, but then on the uh, on the other side, which I think is is even more a, a, a much more terrible thing, is that they don't know who put the roof on. They don't know the roofer either. They don't know the roofer either, uh, and and that's crazy to me. So I think that you're on this path of creating this customer experience. That's what makes it memorable. Yes, that's the whole thing. Right. It's kind of like you go to the Nike store. And, you know, you shop and then you get the bag, right? They put the stuff in the yeah. bag. That bag becomes a trash bag at the end of the day, yeah. right? You go to the Burberry store, you leave a ton Gucci store. Same exact experience. But now that bag all of a sudden becomes like storage. Yeah. It's like you don't want to throw it away yeah. all of a sudden. Like, you yeah. know, they even like the strings, everything is just like an elevated experience. Yes. And I feel like that's what the main thing is. Because if it's not about the experience, then it's just roofing and it's just a construction zone. You're actually like, to me, I feel like you're... Um, almost like a problem, like you're a nuisance a little bit yeah. for, the, for that day when stuff is going on. Yeah. But with us and our process is like an experience. Yeah. They feel like I'm getting an upgrade. I mean, you know? part part of the fears that that are that that homeowners have in dealing with the roofing process is that they're inconvenienced, that that they're gonna have their their home damaged by faulty workmanship, things exactly. like that. Like those are all real things. So making an experience out of it. Making sure that those fears are are, are 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 hit on along the way, that's that's so important. So now you. you've you're looking at this is I think this is interesting too. You're looking at luxury brands as a, a kind of a model. <laughs> yeah. Where Burberry Don. Right. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, because um, when I say Burberry Don too, we did an event um last year in March. It was the construction of the Burberry trench coat, and I was the host of the Burberry event. So it was the first um Burberry and the construction industry collab together. <laughs> so that's real cool. And yeah, um, the reason why is because that's what I like. So I'm thinking like, how would I attract myself as a customer? Yeah. And I like experiences. I like to go to nice restaurants, yeah. try different things, you know. Yeah. I like to go to the designer stores and, you know, and the, but why do I like that? Is it just because I like to spend money? No, it's because the experience, they make me feel good. The experience is yeah, different. When I, exactly. When I it go is. to Nike, it's, you know, hey, what's up? Or I might have to find somebody. Yeah. And then they'll get the size. Perfect. Good, good experience. But when I go to a luxury store, like I said, you know, it's, yes. hey, Mr. Morgan, they, they might remember your name after you went there just one time. You know, they're going to ask you if you want water. They're going to, um... They're going to give you just a better experience altogether yeah. down to the packaging. Even the receipt, it's in a, it's in a package, Yes, you know, and it's in a branded package. And, and a lot of times like everything feels different. The, the bag, like you're talking about, yes. the bag is different. It's a, it's a higher quality material. It's a, it's a different feel to it and that it, it enhances that experience. Right. Yeah. And then translate that to roofing now, yeah. just like you said, customers want to know if they're siding, if they're, if you're going to be treating their plants, you know, with, with yes. white glove care. So when we show things like the catch-all, for instance, and we're showing that we're protecting the siding, you can have a J Japanese maple tree, but we're going to be protecting it as well. That's the things that make the difference, you know, yeah. and that helps the experience. So I, I like the I like where you're going with this. This is this is really interesting, and that's what led to where we're at today in in the roof gallery. Yes, right it is is putting together this experience. So instead of just having an office, the roof gallery. Right. So I got this from you. So um, I think you said this before. You did say this before. I don't want to butcher it, though. You said, do you rather be the best roofer or the best known roofer? Yeah. Right. And my answer is the best known because I feel like once I'm the best known that I can really reel in everything else and I'll be the best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And at the end of the day, um, and if you're the best, but nobody knows you, what good is that? What good is it? <laughs> right. So. That's what I feel like. I feel like everything that I do, the Roost by Don, even my business partner, Dan the Mansion, Victory Shingles, we all have, like, names. Yeah. Like, you know, um, 
where eventually for Halloween we'll be able to have costumes, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I feel like everything should needs to be branded, and I feel like we have the best office in the world. And really, it starts with the United States. But I feel like if you have the best office in the United States, it's probably the world too. So in order to have the best roofing office in the world, I feel like the first thing it needs to have a different name. It yeah, can't, it can't just be regular, right? It, it can't have be like just a superhero. The right? roof by Don office. Like yeah, the roof then, by Don office. Then that's just an office. That's yeah. why does any other roofer even need to come here then, right? Yeah. But when it's the roof gallery, it's uh, more um, inviting, and we want to invite the the industry as a whole. And we want to um, affect the culture, not just, you know, our clients or, you know, our five mile radius, so to speak. Um, so I feel like with the roof gallery, now we're able to celebrate everyone like yourself. You're in the roof gallery. They're yeah. in the um, roofer's coffee shop in the kitchen. The roofer's coffee shop. We have um, Ico here. We have GAF. We have Euroshield. We have different brands. Yep. Um, we have um, Pitch Gauge. We have the Rich Pro that's involved. John the Roof Pro with his discontinued um, wall section. Yep. We have Roof Hustlers, Hail Trace. Um, <laughs> we got Matt Mullen in the building, <laughs> and we got the Hail Cannon. So I can't wait for you guys to see that a little later. That's going to be so cool. So we have the industry that's involved in this um, in this project, and I think that's the main thing because with the roof gallery, it's supposed to be the roof museum. That's what, what it is, and basically a, a hall of fame for roofers. And I felt like we didn't have that in the industry yet. So yeah. this is what it is. So we had to make it happen. And that's what it is. And, and, and in, in putting this together, you put a lot of thought into it. Um, like when I arrived today, you gave me the tour. Yes, yes. Right. And it's a very methodical tour. Yes. Right. It, it's, it's, it, it's, it's well thought out. Let's walk through the tour a, a, as you, a, as you explain it. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, this is actually real cool. Okay. So, <laughs> so as far as for the roof gallery, I'll give you guys the breakdown and my inspirations. My inspiration is Walt Disney. <laughs> so they have a um they have a ride in Magic Kingdom, the um alien encounter. I don't know if you guys know. So in the alien encounter, when you walk in, the so my, my first thing I want to do is experience. Everything's about the experience. Yeah. So the difference between Disney World and like Six Flags, it's the same ride, like a roller coaster, but when you're waiting in line, in Six Flags you're just waiting in line. But in Disney World it's and then it gives you like a theme it tells you a little story and there's like proceed to the next room and then you go to the next room and then now you actually you know see something else and then you finally do the 60 second ride but it was like a whole story yeah so you feel a better experience than just doing the 60 second ride yeah you know so that's the start of it so that's why once you come into the roof gallery the first thing you do is you watch the screen you get a little intro proceed to the next room <laughs> and then each room has a in each interactive um, thing that you can do. So we have our customer experience room. Um, the homeowners are able to have their personal house on their TV and the roof color changes to whatever shingle they want. So that way they can see it. Um, they, we also have a pull test or uh, we call it the tug test um, at the gallery where they're able to see each individual architectural shingles, whichever one they want. And then they can do the test so they can see for themselves which one is stronger. Yep. And again, just an interactive experience. They put on the white gloves because we handle everything with white glove care. <laughs> we got the media room, which is where we're in right now, where um, homeowners can, again, feel like they're Mr. and Mrs. HGTV. They can sit down and be like, hey, I'm, I'm Donovan. And right <laughs> now I'm at the roof gallery. Catch me and, and watch my new um, roof get built. Yeah. And then we'll put it part of their um, package. So make it like real cool for them. And then in our roof museum, which is the final room, we have a place where they can walk through where on the walls it shows um, basically um, roofing knowledge, but in an artistic way. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. We got virtual reality goggles. We got a couple cool stuff. Yeah. And, and that, so that again, it's a different experience. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what I think is cool about what you're doing it, 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 because roofing is, a, I mean, it's, let's say it's a commodity, mm -hmm. right? Like, Depending on the state that you live in, sometimes you don't even need a license. I don't know about yeah. Georgia. Georgia, here. You, don't Georgia need a you don't need a license, mm -hmm. right? So if you can go and buy shingles, you can sell a roof. <laughs> Technically. Technically, yes. right? Yep, like yep. it's you know, and so so you don't even have so so these differentiators are what makes companies great. Like, right? So and I think that like the most successful companies out there, that's what you'll find. You'll find that that they're, I, I think you're doing very unique things. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But it's, uh, but I think that it, it's it, it's, it's making that customer experience. Whether it's it, just making sure that the phone is answered. Yep. Just making sure that they're communicated with well. Those are like 
those are those differentiate yourself already. Of, of course, right? But I think that it's fun and, and imaginative for you to to have thought of this. Because at the end of the day, I need to be the world's most known roofer. So I feel like there's billions of people in the world. So I got to do something different. Yeah. <laughs> and really, it is different, but it's different for the roofing industry. Yeah. As far as, you know, what we're doing, there's nothing necessarily new under the sun. It's just that we're trying to, again, just give people an experience, but yep. just the roofing. You know? Let's talk about, so is, is door-to-door the main, the main focus for, for selling, or do you have other marketing channels that, that, you, uh, that you work on? Um, door-to-door, so just so you guys know, this is our sophomore year in business. So yeah. we actually, our first year in business is January 1st, 2022, last year. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we did, um, our main focus is door-to-door. Or I say was our main focus, but really it's generating our own leads um, and having the, our right customers find us. Yeah. So that's why we give the experience. That's why we we have our office. Before we had our office, so many people were saying, "Don't get a roofing office. Roofers don't need it. It's only if they have a, a large sales team. We have a, a couple sales guys, you know, but only if you have a large sales team, you don't need yeah. it, you know. And to me, um, I don't look at it like that. I look at it as this is going to generate money as well. It actually already has, you know, so we already passed that, you know. Yeah. And um, at the end of the day, again, it gives the homeowner an experience. Everything is usually done at the dinner table. Yep. Um, a lot of times because they don't have a roofing office, you don't know how their stuff look. Yeah. So in this um, in this case, they can actually come see us, see how our house looks, yeah. that we're clean. Yeah. So now you can have a better expectation of what we're going to do to your house. How, uh, what percentage of customers have, do you feel are, 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 are making the, the choice to come in and sit down with you? Because I think that's a lot of times when people talk about having an office and, you know, and things like that, they're like, well, no one's going to come in. The, um, I think it's all about expectation and what, mm. and what are you making it for? So are yeah. you, are you making an office for people to come in? A lot of times they don't. True. They just make a roofing office just to store materials and yeah, just yeah. to have a quick sales training and then tell the guys to go on. So that's what you're going to get. So our, mm. our office is a little bit different. It's set up different. It, it looks a little different. So that way it's inviting for people to come. And, um, and we want them to come. We want them to get the, uh, the VIP experience. So have you built that into like your sales process? Yes. Like that, that, uh, how have you built that into your sales process? We have a Roost by Don VIP customer experience. Ah. So when it's um, designer shingles, when they're, um, when they're not cutting any corners, they, they want to see the options. Yeah, the best package. Exactly. Good, better, best. They're, they're on the best package, yes. right? Then we let them in. Yeah. If they're trying to, I need to waive my deductible or they're trying to like stuff yeah. like that, then they get the regular package, which yeah. is still great, which is still amazing. It's just there's a difference. Yeah. And that's all. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, and then you guys do, I know, so it sounds like brand is very important to you. Yes. Right? Brand yes. is very important to you. Door to door has been a, the essential factor in how you got into roofing and how you started you know generating business for roofs by but dawn need, but we need to do better i just want to say that with the door to door if if you guys are um i don't want to say let's say door to door because that's you know but yeah insurance to an inverse retail that's what i really wanted to say got it insurance versus retail um if you're if you're a retail company you're not doing insurance all the insurance guys are looking at you like oh my gosh you know it's millions of dollars you're missing out on and then I had to realize it's the same thing, vice versa. Vice versa. So I'm doing insurance sales and we're doing millions, but we're looking at retail guys and they're doing millions in sales and we're missing meat on the bone. So make sure that everyone's doing both insurance I, and retail. I've had a couple of these discussions recently and, mm-hmm. and one of them specifically was that, uh, we, uh, actually I was, uh, I was talking with Deshaun last night o- over dinner and, um, and we were talking about like the perfect roofing company maybe being retail focused first with the ability to do storm restoration work Mm. at a high level, right? So you have that retail consistency, Mm -hmm. you have your brand, you have that, that ongoing presence. And then you, if you can excel at storm restoration on top of that, that sounds dangerous. It actually, that's not dangerous, right? It like, does because then you have your foundation you have set. Your foundation it doesn't set. matter about you're a storm. not reliant on a storm. A storm like Colorado right now. My a goodness. lot of a lot, a lot of roofing companies in Colorado. Yeah, they're praying for a hailstorm, hail mary. Yeah, but at the end of the day, um, if you ought to do retail, there's it a lot of be them, that hard. There's a lot of them not praying anymore. Really? Because they're out of business. Exactly. <laughs> oh my God. Right? Like the facts. It, it it changes when you rely on the storm and not that you can't create a, a successful business 
100% focused on storm restoration. There's mm-hmm. a lot of great roofing companies that have been built on that. But but we're it was just something that Deshaun and I were talking about, and I was like, that's it. Like that that seems like the 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 formula. Yeah, yeah, hundred right? percent. And and that's what we're getting on more too. As as far as for um, companies, because when they when they see us up here and we're speaking of me, I'm speaking about me. I'm we're we're doing great we're in everything, but there's still always room for improvement. Yeah. So especially like the retail side, we need to um, improve on that, and that's I feel like is. Us having the roof gallery, yeah, it's kind of in that direction. It's I think what's fun in business is that there's always an opportunity. Exactly, always, always an opportunity, and there's always an opportunity to make a slight adjustment and make it better. Yep. Um, and so, you know, you guys did a lot of hiring and recruiting. I think that that's a big challenge for people in the industry. What tips or tricks can you give to contractors in hiring and recruiting good sales reps for their business? Okay, so here's the tip. So sometimes things sound, sound hard, but it's real simple. So I know re- recruiting does seem like it's hard for people in the industry. That's something that I'm real just like, I guess, good at. Like, it's just easy to me. So um, one thing is kind of like the um, the Wolf of Wall Street. So you need to see, like, Donnie, and then he was like, how much you made, in, like, this week? I forgot uh-huh. what he said. And he told him how much he made. He's like, if you show me a paycheck right now, then I'll, then I'll yes. quit my job right now. So the first 20 people that I recruited was, I was at a different thing. I was at AT&T. Um, they said, Dan DeMansion, my business partner, he said, if you show me a $3,000 paycheck, I'll come over. Yeah. Less than a month. <laughs> I showed him a $3,000 paycheck and he came over. Yeah. And really, um, it it's also goes with social media. Roofing is not a bad industry. So what I, when I say that means you don't have to hide it. I know at first it doesn't seem like a sexy industry. We're, we're trying to change. We're trying to change that. You know, we're trying to change that a little bit. But at the end of the day, um, don't hide it. So when you, let me try to make it simpler. If you have a, a Lamborghini, what do you think the first person, if someone sees you, what do you think the question they're most likely going to ask you? What do you do for a living? Right. And that opens the door to say, I'm a roofer. Yeah. I do roofing. So it's the same exact thing. So when you have social Shout media. Out Nick Royer. Okay. You Nick. Oh, yeah. So when you have the, um, the social <laughs> media now, right? Yeah. I see. Um, when you have the social media and you're showing the social proof, yeah. you're showing the not unnecessary Lamborghini, but yeah, you're that you're winning in life. You're happy. You're being successful. It could be small things, even if you're showing food and it looks good. Yeah, you know. So things first, like it's that. show them that there is an opportunity. Yes. I think is it just the, simplifying it is is like look at the that there is look at the opportunity that is here. I think first is showing them. Showing them something that they want to see, like, why is there, why do they want to take this opportunity? Yeah. So first showing them something that they want to see that's attractive to them. You got to yeah. make the commercial first. The, I see. You get yeah. me? Yeah. So that's why, like, rappers, they have yeah. chains and stuff. Yes. It's not just because jewelry. That's why us, we have ghosts for, ghost for sales. We have our yep. chain. Yeah, it's, it's diamonds and, and it's gold. But what it really does is when people see you, now they look at you, oh, what do you do? Oh, you rap? No, actually, I own a roofing company. Yeah. Yeah, our, our salespeople get this when they do $1 million in sales for the year. Really? How do I become a salesperson? Yeah. Next thing you know, a lot of people who like that culture, like that kind of stuff, they're in here now. Yeah. Because they see a vision. They see that, you know, um, things that they like, things that yeah. they're attracted to. So it's the same exact thing. You find out what your, what your people are attracted to. You know, they like cars, they like um, go that, to games, and whatever that's culture it is. too. So you're it's building definitely like culture. It, it. Every company is going to have a slightly different culture. Maybe you're you have a, a, a different focus. Like, a, you know, it doesn't have to be the cars and the, and the exactly. jewelry, too. But it could be something else that is also 100 attracted, uh, attracts people the same way. 100 um, percent. That's awesome. And then now, how are you uh, you know, what is your advice on uh, on, you know, vetting? those sales reps and do you just give everyone a shot and see who you know who who sinks and swims or 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 do you no what's your thoughts on that um great question great question um so another great thing too just to add on that is to make sure that you're recruiting everywhere so not one place yeah. is the right thing it's not just one answer so if someone says hey where should i recruit on zip recruiter hey zip recruiters that, that might be great for some people and that might be terrible for some other people yeah. So go everywhere. So social media, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, ZipRecruiter, um, LinkedIn. Um, they have, um, I'm not thinking, even Craigslist. Literally everything 
you be, once you go on everything, you're going to be able to start getting people from everywhere. Yeah. And it's a numbers game. And then, yes, we definitely do vet them because with us, with our company, we feel like um, because of how much money you can make, that we could really hire anybody, um, even in front of a Home Depot, a Walmart, um, and a McDonald's, and they would be able to, to want the job because of the commissions. Yes. But we want people that are duplicatable, that are ready to learn, that are sponges, and that want growth. So then that way they can fit part of our culture. They want to be proactive. They want to keep leveling up. Yeah. We give them options to level up. And then eventually where they can have their own team, their own office, their own, you know, group that they can manage. But the only way to do that is for them to be duplicatable. Yeah. And so you're thinking of the long run too and, and, and the upward mobility that they'll potentially even have. That's another thing that I think we have, uh, that that's really important is, is people need to see the path that they the, the, even if they're making good money, what's next? Correct. Because right? sometimes if there's a ceiling, it's like yeah. now you feel like you've outgrown your space. Yes. Sometimes when you feel like you've outgrown your space, you need to go in a larger pond, right? Yeah. So that's why you want to let people know, look, there's, there's room for growth. Yep. Look, after you, you're the top salesperson, you could be a team leader too. Yeah. You know, after a team leader, if you want to have your own office with us, you can have your own location. You know, we're going to yeah. help you build that location. We're going to help pump you up so you don't feel like you want to start your own company and be in competition. Because what I see with a lot of roofing companies is they don't offer an upward mobility. They don't offer a way to grow. So mm. people choose their own ponds. Yeah. Where with us, we're dream facilitators. We want, I want you to grow. Yeah. That's the whole point of, of working yeah. uh, for us to make money and to grow. So if you're that guy and you actually have what it takes to grow, I want to empower that fully so we can all grow together. So now we've talked about being a dream facilitator for the sales reps. Mm -hmm. What about on the production side? What about on the operations people? How are you facilitating their dreams? That's a great question. <laughs> no, that's a great question. So to be honest. Because it's different, right? Like yeah. it, it's, it's, it, 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 they don't have the same, it's not the same person in that role for sure. A person that's a, that's a, that's a great sales rep is, is not the same person that will be a great production manager, right? There, mm -hmm. There's different you know, there's different things that you can facilitate for them. You're absolutely right. So the honest answer, I need to do better with that. You yeah. brought that to my attention. Yeah. <laughs> as far as the other <laughs> side, I'm so focused on the sales side that I didn't necessarily, as far as on the uh, production, I know with the production managers, yes, we, we help them same way as far as sales. Yeah. We find out what they like to do prior. Yeah. Um, and then we, we, um, we enhance things like that. Like, yeah. so, our project managers, for instance, they like basketball. Yeah. So it so happens that we're the pro sponsors, of the Atlanta Hawks. So we get them at games, things like that. But our actual crew, we're going to do something for you guys. I got you guys covered. Jim brought some <laughs> my attention. Coming. I got you guys it's covered. Coming. Yes, yes, yes. What are things like, like there's a lot of companies that are, that um, they're, fr they're, they don't, they're afraid to write those brand checks. The Atlanta Hawks sponsorship is a brand check. It's hard to quantify the return on investment on something like that because it's not like a Google local service ads lead and it costs you $45 and you close 35, 40% of them, right? It's a harder thing to quantify. How have you looked at writing those checks for brand? Yeah, so great question. How I look at it is I think everybody first before they do anything need to figure out why they're doing it. Mm. And are you just doing it because you saw someone else's results? So you're like, I see they, they have money, so and they're doing this, so I want to do it too. Yeah. Is it just that kind of thing, or do you actually have like intention? So for me, for instance, me branding with the um, Atlanta Hawks, and this is just transparent, you know? Yeah. Um, I guess that's the only way to do it, right? Yeah. <laughs> me branding with the Atlanta Hawks is, one in my head is, I need to be the best, the biggest known roofing company ever. Yeah. I don't, in roofing, when people ask about roofers, I don't think there's no anybody. Like Tiger Woods, you say golf, Tiger Woods, that's the only person I know. In roofing, it's going to be roofed by Don. But right now, it's nobody or the closest person, um, Bob the Builder, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's why I always say that, Bob the Builder. So that's, that's my competition. Yeah. So I feel like, one, um, I just started, but I'm not a little company. I'm not a small business. I'm mm. not a small company. Don't even treat me that way. A small company can't can't sponsor the Atlanta Hawks, actually. Yeah. So right now, if you want to say I'm, I'm small, I'm the smallest corporate company. I'll take that. So I'm yeah. a corporation. So AT&T, Sprite, Coca-Cola, Roost by Don, 
same we're in the same ball we're in the same arena literally yeah <laughs> yeah literally now yeah and i'm just i'm the smallest corporate company but that's that's was that one that i want to make sure that we're recognized the right way um and also i want to get i want to target people that like the experience and i like a-list clientele and people that like to have experience so even with the atlanta hawks we're in the Harris Club. We got the seats. Is the experience. We're right in the front. We, we're down with the um, players and, and their families. We get free food, free drinks. Yeah. It's all about the experience, you know? So it kind of just ties in with our brand, yeah. so, to be honest. Um, so that's why it, it makes sense to do it as well. So I, what I hear here is that you've, your mindset is, this is my vision. So I'm going to do the things that align with that vision. Correct. Right. So a lot of maybe maybe sometimes con, com, business owners in general, contractors, too, is, is that you get. I you, want you, one. You have a, a big vision. <laughs> you want one? It, it looks good. We got some food on the way here. <laughs> oh, be careful. Thank you. All thank right. you. That was a good catch. All right. We got. Hey, so. we got the chicken. We got the sliders. <laughs> We got shrimp grits as far as on hors d'oeuvres. We got um, we got the the uh, fried chicken and biscuits. It is a full experience. Yep, we got a whole <laughs> bunch of different things. So you guys will see that later on. Yeah, but I think going back to it, it, it's that people don't align with their vision. They they won't uh, they they're afraid to commit their their checkbook to their vision. Maybe that's yeah. maybe that's a good way to put it. Yeah, right? and, it, it's, and also I think that people. Are not visionaries. True. They don't have a vision. Their vision is other people's stuff. Uh, so they, they'll, they'll see me and they'll say, see Rus by Donna say, oh, you're getting endorsed by products? I want an endorsement. How do I do endorsements? <laughs> right? How do I get that? How yeah. do I get a sponsor? Yeah. Oh, I see that you have the roof gallery. It's cool. How, how do I make the roof museum? Yeah. You know? But it's like. It's emulating instead of it being visionary. Correct. I see what you're saying. So there, I'm yeah. doing it for a reason. I made yeah. the roof gallery because. I need to be in the Hall of Fame because I'm going to be the best known roofer. Yeah. And there is no roofing Hall of Fame. So yeah. I have to make it. <laughs> yeah. So that's why it's here. Yeah. You get me? Um, everything that we do, the luxury stuff is because we're, we're creating a roofing experience. So this is the first as far as roofing experience where you're on your own home improvement show. But I'm making that. You know, so the, yes. the Atlanta Hawks, um, I'm, I'm literally have to create the, the yeah. whole vision, you know? Yeah. Um, so that's that's what it really is. So even with the sponsors and endorsements, like how did you get that? Why do you want that? Do you just yeah. want it because you saw me get it, or did you want it because LeBron James has Nike and stuff like that? All top athletes get endorsed, and that's the reason why I feel like I need to be endorsed because that's the same thing all top athletes do, and I'm the top of my industry. That's you interesting, I mean? man. Like, and that's you have such a unique perspective on the business, uh, on the industry. Thank what do you think the greatest insight is you can share with the audience that's that that's helping you find success in your roofing business? Being myself. <laughs> um, so it's Black History Month. Happy Black History Month. Yeah. Being the black sheep, sometimes it's not bad, right? Yeah. You stand out, <laughs> right? So let's just say, just like best known roofers. If there's a bunch of you know white sheep, and then there's one that just stands out, does something just a little bit different. Everyone just cares about. Let's make money because that's they've seen other people make money. And me and I'm like, yeah, I know the money's going to come, but I want to have fun when I come to work. So I want it to be about the experience. Yeah. So now I'm having fun doing it. I think that's what um, attracts everyone else to, and that's what makes it different. So just being yourself. That's awesome, man. Yeah. This has been another episode of the Roofing Success Podcast. The Roofing Success Podcast is a success. <laughs> I'm glad that we have it hosted here at the Roof Gallery. Yeah. And Jim is getting inducted today. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> Thank you. I really appreciate it. Yeah. If you would like to generate more revenue through your digital marketing efforts, please visit roofermarketers.com to get a copy of the book, The Best Known Roofer. Also, check the training section of the website for guides on everything from running effective pay-per-click ads to how to properly set up your Google My Business listing. Thanks for listening.